We don't need to control guns. We need to control murder. God didn't say thou shalt have no guns. God said thou shalt not murder with the gun you have. What was the original idolatry? You create something and then you worship it. Who created artificial intelligence? Why are you worshiping the manufacture of your own hands? You create it and then worship it? That's such an old idea. I thought we outgrew that already. Guess we still have some growing to do. So again, it's not a question even of religion or faith. It's a question of sanity. So started off asking, can you be moral without, without God's commandments? That, that, that's not even on the agenda anymore. Now the question is, can you be sane? Can you be sane without God's commandments? Seems pretty clear that you can't. And the only sanity that we have is because our grandfathers knew what God wanted I don't know if they were committed to it, but they knew. So that sanity kind of passed on to the children and to the grandchildren, but it's fading quickly because if we don't have our own sanity, the inherited sanity is not going to carry us. So whatever morality there is, like this guy says, I don't need God to tell me what's right and wrong. It's an arrogant college student. He says, I know right from wrong. I don't need God to tell me. I said, really? Tell me, what, what do you think is wrong? He says, murder. I said, did you come up with that yourself? <laughs> <laughs> when, when did that come to you? When did you realize that? When did you have that epiphany? Don't be ridiculous. You heard that all your life. Everybody heard it because God said it to Adam and Eve and to Noah and to the Jewish people at Mount Sinai and he engraved it in stone. Don't tell me it's your idea. So whatever morality we do have, we simply plagiarized it. Now you claim it's your morality? Ruby Friedman, speaking about killing, this is one of the biggest topics uh, out there right now. Um, uh, obviously, it has to do with um, shooting in um, Uvalde. And, um, of course, everybody is now trying to get guns off the streets. Uh, in accordance to Torah, to morality, um, should people own guns? Should they have the right, like the Const American Constitution allows us to own a gun? Um, is that a good idea? Is that a moral idea? Or is it something that, uh, as people are saying, should be revised? You know, Jewishly speaking, guns are so foreign to Jewish life. That we're we're kind of we're kind of biased in this. I, I don't know anybody who has a gun. In in Brooklyn, of all places. Who who? Like oh, every television show, every every movie, it's a perfectly normal family and everything. And then all of a sudden, they reach into their drawer and take out their gun. So what what's a gun doing there? Guns are just part of part of the furniture. Everybody has a gun. What is that? Do you have a right to own a gun? Absolutely. Absolutely. Are you worried that you're going to need to protect yourself against a government? Uh, you'll never have enough guns for that. But Gun control is not the answer. It's not the answer. We don't need to control guns. We need to control murder. 
God didn't say thou shalt have no guns. God said thou shalt not murder with the gun you have. So don't blame it on the gun. So what's missing is not gun control. What's missing is self-control. And, and this, this last shooting is particularly disturbing because, because of the fact that he killed his grandmother. The one person in his world, in his life, who loved him and took care of him and was there for him was his grandmother. And he shot her. And he himself very cold-bloodedly says, I had nothing against my grandmother, but I needed the numbers. I needed to kill more and more people, so I needed the numbers, so I killed her. Now, that is deeply disturbing. First of all, the fact that there's no conscience. And secondly, that he actually was looking to be proud of how many people he killed. He, he holds the record now. Something to be proud of. I don't know if people notice, but they should. What he was doing was playing a video game. That's what he was doing. He was acting out a video game. What is the objective in the video game? Shoot as many people as you can. That's exactly what he was doing. He became a video game. And all the experts who say that those violent video games don't affect children, they should all be in jail. They, they are the ones who are responsible, not the kids. So if you grow up, and that's the one thing they all have in common, by the way, all the school shooters, they're all young and they're all addicted to video games. That is not a coincidence. I mean, you, you almost can't even hold them responsible. Beside the fact that they're underage, but even if they're 18, which this guy was, is he responsible? I don't think so. I think he's a victim. Rabbi Friedman, but it looks like we're going um, towards that as well because of the metaverse. Now the metaverse creates uh, people and they become avatars of their own uh, computer games. So they actually are becoming those characters in computer games and how easy is it to uh, lose, lose uh, perspective of reality, whether you're inside a video game or you're no longer inside a video game. I mean, if, if people are getting confused before, before they actually had their own character in the video game, what are we looking forward to over here? I, I wouldn't be surprised if in the mind of this 18 year old, all those people are going to get up, push the reset button and start all over again and shoot them again. I'm not a psychiatrist, but I, I am quite convinced that that is what's going on in the brain of many of these addicted kids. That you can shoot a bunch of people and then you kind of rack up some number, some, some, and then, and then you push start and you start all over again. I'm not sure he even knows that he killed people. He knows he shot them. So that, that, that it's not damaging is such a blatant and callous lie. We need the wisdom of Torah because there is no other. Rabbi Friedman, why is it taking people so long to um, see the reality, to understand, understand where we're at right now? I mean, people are waking up. There is no doubt about it. I'm not sure. They're still hopeful that, uh, you know, we're going to become Republican, that 
you know, there's going to be different government, different set of rules. Somebody's going to come. People are waking up, but they're still in, you know, they're still hopeful for some sort of a here now savior. What will change people around so they will understand that the, that we need the savior, <laughs> not a Band-Aid? Uh, look, we've always believed that there is a core decency to human beings. We are not born evil. We're born vulnerable, but not evil. So uh, how much evil can a, can a human soul tolerate? Particularly if uh, we, we did once know right from wrong. We don't have to reinvent the wheel. So it's, it, there's going to be, there's going to be a, a backlash. Uh, the pendulum will swing in the opposite direction as it always does. But then it goes to the extreme on the opposite side and creates its own problems again. And that's why the Torah is the only true sanity without extremism. Anybody who anybody who studies the Torah with any with any seriousness with any can't 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 come away without the conviction that this is sanity. It's not extreme right. It's not extreme left. It's sanity, and it also happens to be godly. Surprise, surprise. Speaking of good news, there's a wonderful retreat coming up, the National Jewish Retreat, run by the JLI, Jewish Learning Institute. It's going to be August 9th through the 14th in the Miami area, in a five-star hotel, best speakers, best lectures, best classes, best accommodations, and best food. So if you have those five days free, or any one of those five days free, think about joining us. It's going to be great for body and soul. And there's actually a discount if you put my initials in there, RMF. There's a little discount for those who are already committed, already studying, already interested. Google it, look it up, Jewish Retreat, JLI. And uh, hopefully we'll see you there. If you enjoyed this conversation or this topic and you're looking for more information or you want to hear it again from another angle, there is a way to do that. And that is in this book. It's all there. Order it from Amazon. You can read it, reread it and share it. I want to invite you to join us as VIPs, partners in our work. And join us also for uh, a personal chat with other members of the VIP club. We talk about many things. There's an opportunity to ask, to respond, to make a comment, to meet the other supporters. And together we can really make a difference in Jewish life and in life in general. So join us. It's good to know dot org. Log in, call, make contact, and join us with the VIPs.